This remarkable painting was made by the Derby artist Joseph Wright. It was first shown to the public in London in 1766, when Wright was just 32 years old, and it caused something of a stir. Today it remains one of his most famous works, and can be found here in Derby at the Museum and Art Gallery. But what does it show, and why is it so iconic? A clue to the first of these questions can be found in Wright's original title for the painting, which he called a philosopher giving that lecture on an orrery in which a lamp is put in the place of the sun. It's not very snappy, admittedly, but this long description does tell us pretty much everything we need to know about what we're looking at. At the centre of the picture is the philosopher of the title, dressed in a rich red gown and delivering a lecture. Gathered around him is a mixed audience, including a woman, seen on the left, and children, each absorbed in thought, or in the case of the man on the left, eagerly taking notes. The focus of their attention is the instrument at the very heart of the painting, a planetary model crafted from brass and wood, known as an orrery. Named after Charles Boyle, the fourth Earl of Orrery, it's designed to demonstrate the motions of the planets around the sun, which in the case of this scene is represented by an oil lamp. Though this is obscured by a young boy who stands with his back to us, we can just make out the glass vase of the lamp to the left of his elbow and below him its reflection. Within the orrery itself, we can see some of the planets and their moons. These are held on brass stalks, which connect to a clockwork mechanism within the instrument that moves the planets around when a handle is turned. To the left of the lamp is the Earth, with a ring representing the orbit pattern of our Moon. The position of the other spheres would suggest that they are Jupiter to the far right, and perhaps Mars to the far left. But most distinctive of all is Saturn, with its rings and outer moons. At the time this picture was painted, this was the most distant of our planets to have been yet discovered. And here we find a subtle detail. Wright has painted the shadow of one of Saturn's moons on the surface of the planet. It's an eclipse in action. And just in case we chance to miss it, a little girl with her arm around a young boy points it out to us, copying the philosopher's own pose as she does so. It may be, in fact, that it's the cause and effects of eclipses that the philosopher is in the process of demonstrating. Wright's painting was produced at a time when public interest in astronomy was flourishing. For those that could afford them, there were books which catered to a range of interest levels, including some written specifically for children. In private homes, as well as town halls up and down the country, travelling lecturers delivered demonstrations using models similar to the one you see here. In the early 1760s, Derby played host to James Ferguson, a Scottish astronomer and instrument maker, but it also boasted its own homegrown community of scientists, including John Arden and Washington Shirley, the fifth Earl Ferrers. With the help of local friends, Shirley had mapped the transit of Venus in 1761, his observation of which helped determine the distance between the Earth and the Sun, and earned him a fellowship of the Royal Society. Shirley also had an orrery made for his own personal use, and later purchased Wright's painting for his home at Staunton Harold, on the Derbyshire and Leicestershire border. It's easy to see why Washington Shirley was attracted to the picture, but for many of its original viewers, it was Wright's depiction of light rather than the modern scientific subject matter of the painting that really caught their attention. The dramatic contrast of light and dark was inspired by the paintings of the old masters, in particular the works of 17th century Dutch tenebrist painters, as well of course as Wright's own observation of the effects of artificial light in darkened interiors. It's not only eye-catching, but this use of light lends a hint of gravitas, seriousness to the otherwise popular modern activity of lecture going. In fact, in more recent times, the light at the heart of this painting has been interpreted as a metaphor for learning and the arrival of knowledge 
as it floats over each of the faces of the assembled group in turn. Today, it's celebrated as an icon of the progressive intellectual spirit of its times, and what we now call the Age of Enlightenment.